Okay, get this straight right now. I have been ready for a long time. Okay. Oh, two seconds. Jan, Jan's sleeve was not ready. So she's been dinking with her sleeve for, I don't know, like two minutes or something. So, good evening. Hello. Welcome to the Divine Fellowship Wednesday Wisdoms. Phil. Pastor Phil. Pastor Janice. Phil, Janice. Howdy happy, doody. Happy to see ya. Somebody signed in. Hello. Who is that? Oh, hi, Sandy. So. I'm glad you're here. Oh, and another person. Who's the other person? I can't read that. Well, it says Sandy, too. Yeah. It says hello, everyone. Yeah, so. So, yeah. It's just a so far Sandy. <laughs> but hello. <laughs> no, there's somebody else. There's, there's three people now, so. Oh, okay. Ashley. Hi, hello. Ashley. Do, 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 do. All we do is just kind of wait for a couple of minutes and just talk about My nothing. eye is burning. Is it smoky outside today? Hans, really? Haven't seen Hi, you Hans. Forever. How's Hans today? And Mary Lou. Hello, Mary Lou. Hey, Mary Lou. Okay. <coughs> Valerie. 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 Get on with it. Okay. Please. Stupid, oh. stupid jokes. Then again, yeah. there's something else <laughs> yes. See, there's worse things than us just worrying about nothing. So. Stupid jokes. Stupid jokes. I don't know if I did this one last week. I did the one about the the um, what's green and has twenty two legs and plays football. Yeah. I, did the, yeah, I don't remember yeah. what it was. But it was stupid. Oh, it was stupid. It was the Green Bay Pickles. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. How can you tell? These are all silly. Why did the pie go to the dentist? He needed a filling. Sometimes they're obvious. Other times they make no sense at all. <laughs> kind of like you. Well, yeah. What's brown, wrinkled, and lives in a tower? This one's stupid. Okay, so brown and wrinkled would be a prune. No, you're not. No, don't worry about it. The lunch bag of Notre Dame. What? I know. I know. At the first part of this book, you could get some of them because they at least made some I'm not ready sense. to take it in. Yeah, I know, I know. Pitch it. What do you get when you cross a pig and a centipede? Bacon and legs. Bye. That's it? You're going to just dump that stuff and run? Well, yeah. there's Isn't there something else you want to talk about? There was something else we were going to chat about. What? Was it the condor lady? Were you going to talk about that for a minute? Probably, but I don't remember her name. It was Jan Hammer. Where's Jan Hammer? I think it was her name. I could go look real quick, but I think that think that's the name. Nice lady. She's in her 90s. Um, you know, if anybody could be say, that lady saved the California condors, that would be it. Uh, fascinating story. Um, if you ever get a chance to read it, it was in uh, this month's Autobahn. Yes, we're Autobahn members. So, we love you, Autobahn. Um, but it was quite a story. It seemed like that. you know, that's a bad thing. Well, that's just, I don't know. <laughs> you are so weird. <laughs> but it's a fascinating story about literally, you know, if anybody, again, uh, saving the condors. I mean, it was down so, to like one. One. She had been following the last one in the wild. Only one. And she had a choice of either letting it live out its life or taking it into custody if you will custody. <laughs> captivity <laughs> and, cap no, okay captivity custody whatever and trying to find out along with the other ones what's happening what they can do and they let's put just this way they were successful they had some issues over i've been following this a little bit off and on for probably 30 years and it's been quite quite something they now have a, a, a good amount in the wild, and there's still a problem, and I can go into deeper, but, you know, read the information if you can. It's quite interesting. So if you're And the whole that bottom line stuff. of that is one person, just one, can make a huge difference. Uh-huh. Yeah. So even if you think you're not making a difference, maybe you are. Maybe you are. Just keep doing the right thing. Do a little bit all the time. And you can make a difference. Take chances, go out on a limb. She became a biologist when women were not being biologists. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't actually start her getting, doing what she really wanted to do until she was 46. 
So before that, she was just kind of a... We were 46 when we started the Guy Fawcett. Weren't we? I don't know. 23 years ago. Cool. So, well, you're... There you go. Age is just a thing. Okay. Bye. So, thank you, Phil, for that little snippet of information. So, again, um, if my voice drops off, let me know. I'm working really hard to keep my voice up. We found that the microphone wasn't working really well either. So, <clears throat> I'm trying here to, to speak up and share some information with you. So, sleeves are still missing. <laughs> I can't think when my sleeves are bunged up. Anyway, <clears throat> last Sunday we talked a little bit about in his presence, in divine presence, and what that feels like, what that looks like, <clears throat> the experience of being where you feel accepted and where you're just in the presence of kindness. And I've often said kindness is a superpower and can you imagine standing in the presence of divine source that is nothing but kind? It, it was a profound experience. And I want to chat with you just a little bit about that again. Because when we can eliminate the scornful looks that other people have, have put on us, or the scornful things they've said to us, when we can transcend that by tapping into this higher energy level, it's so healing. It's just beautifully healing. Let me tell you a story. <clears throat> Unrelated, but related. So I have this Rose of Sharon plant. Actually, I have a big, beautiful red hibiscus, and I have two Rose of Sharon trees, one wild volunteer that is growing kind of intermixed and intermingled with our um, arborvita, and then a beautiful little pink bush, and then uh, two years ago I bought a beautiful rose of Sharon called uh, blueberry smoothie. So its first year it didn't do very well. I think we had like maybe one or two blooms, and then. It got cold and all the buds fell off. <clears throat> this year I've uh, tried a different fertilizer on it. I think it was more appropriate for it. Um, it still would get buds, but they would be crusty and dry. Um, this particular variety is supposed to love heat and it still wouldn't even open up in the heat when we had those really hot spells. So I, I had a talk with that and I went up and I said, Bloom or I'm yanking you out. <laughs> they did. Didn't bloom. So then I thought, well, I'll try this differently. Went out and I said, you could be spectacular if you bloomed. This thing is covered in blooms. And when they get a little crusty, little, it would be this beautiful ruffled purple. It was just gorgeous. You would be fantastic if you would just bloom. And so, and then after doing that, I gave it a healing. Remember how we do our energy circle and how we do it for ourselves? And when we're just by ourselves, we put our hands here and then we bring energy in and send it to our heart space. Down the left hand, the energy jumps from the left hand to the right hand, back up to the heart space where it connects the circuit. Well, you do the same thing when you're doing a healing, or you can. There's more than one way to do that. That's one way to do it. So I did that on this plant, and I did this healing on this plant, and I could feel the energy in my hands. It was like sucking it up. Uh, so I thought, well, you know, it blooms, it blooms, it doesn't, it doesn't. That's how it is. Two days later, went out and boom, all the little buds that were kind of crusty and dry looking, they opened up, and now I have like about twenty blooms on this thing. I should have like two or three hundred with as many buds as there are, but I'm happy with 20 because that means we're going in the right direction. So I gave it a little more healing uh, this afternoon. Uh, I'll probably give it a little more fertilizer tomorrow or the next day. But all that to say is that we don't do well, plants don't do well when they're criticized. <laughs> plants are very sensitive to energy. 
And this little poor little plant, for some reason, just couldn't get itself to open up. And it was a tragedy because it's so beautiful. And when it opened up, it just opened up my I'm happy to see that. And that's how Divine Source looks at you and me. When we're closed off and we're afraid to open up, we're afraid to step out, we're afraid to be who we are, it's so sad. And so this healing energy is available to us. It's being sent to us if we can receive it. And we receive it when we become aware that it's there. As soon as we become aware that it's there, it's there. And we can receive that. And sometimes we can't open up because of so much criticism in our childhood, so much criticism in the past relationships and that sort of thing. So what I'd like us to do this evening is take a quick trip into a place where we can receive this healing energy and let it transform all the negative things and all the hostile things and all the critical things that don't serve us anymore, that just keep us locked up. Because if we were to bloom, we would be fantastic. And that's what Spirit wants you to know tonight. If you could open up and bloom, do what you came here to do, you'd be fantastic. But it's fear that keeps us back. It's worry of what other people will think. Because guess what? In the past, when somebody criticized us or it didn't go really well for us, uh, it, was, it was scary. Especially if you were a child and your parents didn't like you much. You know, that's you don't thrive under those circumstances too well. But here as grown-ups, now it's time for us to take a look at that. Because we don't have to fall under that same criticism. If somebody criticizes me now, it might hurt for a little while. But then it's like, hmm, okay. They get to have their opinion. And I don't have to have it, the same opinion. I don't have to take it on. I don't have to own it. When we were younger, somebody would criticize us, we owned it. And part of that was so that we could grow up and be a real normal human being, so we could be uh, in society appropriately. Because sometimes we were out of line or out of control, and you know those kinds of things were meant, intentionally meant to mold us into acceptable human beings. But unfortunately, we often took those things not as they were meant necessarily, but we took them as gospel truth that we were not valuable. And sometimes the people in our world had their own issues and when they were tired or cranky or whatever and they would take it out on us and we would take it personally. I think we, we owned that, that we were in fact not good enough. So for now, let's sidestep that. Let's step out of the way of that. And before we do that, I'm going to ask you a question. If you had in your hip pocket all the confidence needed to do whatever it is that you would like to do, what's ever in your heart to do, what would you do? Would you travel? Would you uh, write a book? Would you sing songs? Would you um, create something? Would you do some painting? What would you do? What would you choose to do with yourself? Would you help people who are less fortunate than you? Would you campaign for some higher, um, something, lo some lofty goal? Would you learn more? What is in your heart? I don't know what's in my heart, you know, because sometimes we just get caught up in duty. What's the next thing we have to do, and then the next thing, and then we get in this routine, and then duty is just all we do. Stop for just one second and center into your heart space. Now your brain is going to want to play along, but your brain is probably going to try to challenge your thinking and tell you why you can't. Tell it thank you for that information, but when you're ready for that, you'll, you'll ask its opinion. But for now, we're listening to the heart space. Can you do that? Sure you can. It's not easy to do because we usually listen to that. Because that voice in there is going, eh, eh, eh. that's just like the voices we've heard in the past. So it's familiar. We're used to being criticized. So when we criticize ourselves, it feels normal. It feels right. For now, for just this moment in time, just that. Just 
Remember, um, what is his name? Caesar Milan, he does the dog training. And they go, Shh. <laughs> So he's trying to get his dog's attention and say, hey, don't do that. So get your mind's attention. It's like a wild dog. Just Shh, don't do that. And for now, for this moment in time, bring your attention into your heart space. What does your heart really want to do? Now, one thing that can help you find what you really want to do, there's two ways. One way is kind of an odd, funny way, and the other is just a little different. So one way is what it irritates you the most in the world. Because there's where your destiny is. What irritates you the most is where you have a trigger point. And that trigger point is telling you something that you have an ability to shift. You have a talent or ability that you can make a difference about that. That's one way what irritates you the most. The second way is what do you find bliss in? What did you do when you were a kid that you just really loved, really enjoyed? What was something that you, you liked to do? And find the bliss in that. Did you like getting your hands in the dirt, making mud pies? Well, they, either there's a chef there, or there's some sort of agriculture there, or there's some sort of um, working with plants and dirt and all of that sort of thing, or maybe it's some sort of construction. See how that, the, follow those chains. What is it in your heart that you love to do when you were young? Because when you're young, you didn't have all of those restrictions. Well, most of us had some of those restrictions, but not all the time. It wasn't totally oppressive. If you've had one of those childhoods where everything was totally oppressive, I hope you get some counseling help because it's time to move past that. It's time to find what your heart wants to do. So looking at that, either what irritates you or what you find bliss in. And now, if you had all the confidence in the world, you could do that. You could just bloom in that and flourish in that and thrive in that. And now... We're going to ask Divine Source, whatever that is for you, to grant you a sense of how much you're appreciated, how much you're loved, and how much you're accepted. This sense of acceptance is powerful. And it doesn't matter if I accept you or not. It doesn't matter if somebody else, your friend, accepts you or not, because they have their own thing going on. But what matters is Divine Source can accept you right where you are. And that sense of exception, acceptance can give you the power to move through those traumas. All right, so getting in your heart space again, noticing what it is in your heart that you would really like to do. What's something in your heart that you would really like to accomplish? This is called your heart's desire. It's not on my want. I want this, I want that. That's usually an external something or other to make me feel better for now. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about what your heart would like to accomplish with your life. So your life has meaning. Now, notice that. And now take your energy to the bottoms of your feet and you have the two-way portal there in, each, uh, in the bottom of each foot, right in the arch. Open that and let any doubt or any of those downloaded um, criticisms drain. You don't need to carry them. They're heavy. They wear on us. They tear us down. Just let them go as best you can for now. Maybe you're not going to totally, perfectly, absolutely get rid of everything. That's okay. As best you can for now. And let that go. And draw energy from the earth. This grounded energy that grants you strength. You're here. My gosh, you're here. You're on this planet. You're here for a reason. You woke up today for a reason. And the reason is right here. Not up here. It's right here. Because what happens if when you find it here, and we access this energy in a minute, then your brain's going to find the way. Your brain will find the way to make it happen. Because your brain will be on search mode. And the brain will open up doorways for you. The brain will connect you with people that you, you can't imagine. You didn't even knew had that information for you. Heart space. Now, so bring that grounded energy in. 
you're here, you're here for a reason, you're here for a purpose. You don't even have to know what it is. Just to open up to that. Okay? Now, in your heart space, just be with that. You know, I'm here. I am here. Not long even say that to yourself. I am here. Those I am statements are powerful. Because just like when, when God was identifying himself to Moses, he said, I am that I am. I am. Those I am statements are powerful. They keep us here in this moment. They empower this now moment, which is where we have all of our energy, which is where we have the, the ability to move forward. Now, from the heart space, I am here. Bring your attention to the top of your head. And that energy portal will open. You're always connected to spirit, but this is going to open even more. And let that open up to the ethereal realms where this divine, loving acceptance exists. And if you can imagine it, you can have it. If you can't imagine it, ask for it to be given to you. Ask for it. Remember the old seek and you shall find, ask and it shall be given? In the verse that we read on Sunday, I love this one. I have a lot I like, right? This one, Psalms 37, 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Your heart, what's in your heart to do, you'll be gifted with that. You'll be gifted with that. You'll be gifted with doorways and opportunities and, and insights. The next verse. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he will do it. So here's the thing. Trust. Just be willing to trust. Trust that there is kindness. Trust that that kindness is focused and centered on you right here, right now. Let that kindness flow in and think into your heart space. Let that kindness reside here. Let that acceptance reside here. Not as, as you better do it my or I'm going to get you. No. This is that acceptance from the eyes of kindness. When you look at a little baby, you don't say, oh, well, I don't like that kid. No, it's just a baby, it's innocent, it's just precious, it's sweet. You just love them anyway, right? Doesn't matter if they have a poopy diaper or not. You love them. You certainly don't want to enjoy a messy diaper, but you just love them. Or a kitten, or a puppy. You just love them. They're so cute. They're so sweet. If we can love a puppy, a kitten, or a baby that way, can you imagine the love the divine source has for you right now? Just imagine that. And allow yourself to receive it. Give yourself permission. I hereby allow myself to receive divine acceptance. I hereby allow myself to receive divine acceptance. Let it come into your heart space. And from your heart space, let it radiate out into all aspects of your body. From your heart space, let it radiate into your mind. This divine acceptance now grants you courage. It grants you awareness, this expanded awareness that will bring to your insight, bring to your uh, attention things that are appropriate for your heart's desire to be fulfilled. And you can trust that. Promised trusts. Trust it. So allow that acceptance and that appreciation to just flow in here throughout your whole being. Allow that acceptance to feel Accept it. Maybe this is the first time in your whole life. Take it in. Take it on. It doesn't matter if you approve or accept yourself. That's totally unnecessary. Because the brain is going to tell us all things are wrong with us, why we are not acceptable. But that doesn't play a role here. That's not what's going on here. What is happening is this acceptance, this kind, loving kindness, 
this acceptance that allows us to grow. Can you feel your mind receive that information? Can you feel yourself take that on? Your world will be different now in this moment than it was when we started a few minutes ago. That's how powerful this is. This is life changing. Take it in, take it on. Because you're here for a reason. Even if you don't know what that is, your heart does. And your mind will help you find your way. If you can, the part of your mind that is telling you you're not good enough, that you can't. And here's why. Your mind is just trying to keep you safe. Thank you, mind. But with divine courage and this divine acceptance, and this divine kindness, my life can unfold. Your life can unfold. We can bloom. And we can be magnificent. So I hope you take time to take that on. You might want to watch this more than once to tell you really get it. Because this is really significant. So be with that. I hope that feels really good to you. I'd like you to just gently close the bottoms of your feet. And just notice that you are so connected to Divine Source. Just carry that with you. Carry that with you. As your day unfolds. As tomorrow unfolds before you. Just keep your heart space and your mind open to receiving guidance that will, that will allow your heart to sing, will allow you to really unfold and bloom. So that's all I have to share with you this evening. I hope that's blessed you well. Mr. Phil, if you'd come back and join me for a closing energy circle, I would much appreciate that. Oh, right on time. How about that? So we're up hands together really fast. He's back. And again, we're just going to do for ourselves. However, you're still connected to that divine source, bringing that appreciation, acceptance, kindness into your heart space. Send it down to your left hand. From your left hand, send it to your right hand. From your right hand, back to your heart space. And that closes that circuit. That opens that circuit or connects that circuit, however you want to say that. And that allows the energy to flow. And as that energy flows, you'll feel this energy between your hands. As that energy is flowing, know that you can hold someone else in your awareness. Somebody maybe needs a healing or comfort or encouragement, uh, whatever. Just know that if you're holding them in your awareness, they'll share in this energy. This energy isn't restricted to, to this moment or to this between your hands, it can go wherever your intent sends it. Mm -hmm. Across the country, done long distance healings for 30 years. And it, it's powerful. It works. It's amazing. It works really, really well. It really helps if you want to imagine that person standing in that energy beam. That'll amplify that healing energy. You don't have to do it that way, but you might want to think about that. Now just... Pick somebody, hold them in your awareness for just a moment. It can even be a pet, it's all right. Or a plant, maybe a plant that needs to bloom. <laughs> and as you're just being mindful of them for a moment, just let that energy flow with the same love, the same appreciation, that same acceptance. No need to fix, no need to change, just holding them in appreciation for a moment. And now gently, 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 take a deep breath in and exhale to release them. Release them from between your hands. If you need to rub your hands together again, whatever you need to do. Bringing fresh, bright energy in from that higher source. We don't want any psychic, psychic backwash from that psychic. psychic. Psychic, psychic backwash. So bring the fresh energy in to your heart space, to your left hand, your right hand, back to your heart space. Closing that circuit, opening that circuit, however you want to say that. Allowing that energy to build, build, build. Collect as much as you can from that. Bring it back into your heart space. May your life be a prayer. God bless, and we will see you on Sunday. Sunday!